Hello, everyone. And... <laughs> we got some late, late breaking news. Do we have a? Yeah, see, I need a, I need a producer here so we can have a, a banner at the bottom. Yeah, we I'm need being... a banner scrolling That's... at the bottom, a ticker yeah. at the what, bottom. What, what's that? I'm, I'm being told from the control room we have breaking news. <laughs> That's yes. right. Um, where are those things? Oh, here they are. What is this? Ticker. Oh, Sim John go. the Red Scarf. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> yeah, we need anyway. to top up. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> We're recording this. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Kiss My Wax. Um, since our explosive episode on the color rock and roll over promo, uh, explosive. explosive. I quit. It's like diarrhea. <laughs> We're such losers. <laughs> My wife is like, you need to get a life. I know. Yeah. <laughs> or, or a team of therapists. <laughs> well, What's we've wrong had with you people. I know. <laughs> we've had a lot of back and forth in the background with lots of different people. People that are, are, uh, you know, yes, this is this is definitely real, or yes, I'd lean more towards real, and then people that lean, you know, no, this isn't real. This is this is fake. It came along in the early '90s, late '80s, or something like that. Still, um, still, and uh, again, we're talking about the color rock and roll over promo. Our last episode. If you haven't seen it, go watch it and then watch this. And uh, but tonight, uh, we had we had a friend that went out of his way and if you watch the last episode you know that john took that three thousand seven hundred dollar lp that's what it just sold for on ebay yeah. and he split it apart to so we could see what was on the inside yeah. and we had some patent numbers and some printing plant numbers and just uh, some genuinely vintage construction of jackets lots of different things again go watch that episode if you haven't seen it and one of the things that a few people were saying was, man, I wish someone would bust apart the the black and white promo, the, you know, this actual promo. Yeah. And see what this jacket said on on the inside. And right. Well, we had a gentleman who would, I, I guess I'm going to say was he may still be leaning that way, but was firmly in the this is a counterfeit camp. Right. Yeah. Which was fine because I was in that camp six or seven years ago as well and just as as we've looked at these things and talked to people that actually owned them and had them in their hands i've kind of went more this way and since our last episode i'm definitely in the this this thing is legit now based on what we found out now i definitely think this thing is legit but yeah. Big we news. still we still have a skeptic and uh but that skeptic uh is the gentleman who took this jacket apart and we found some pretty interesting information and uh, I'll bring him in now. Uh, read his name at the bottom if you're watching this. It's Mike. I can't fucking believe this stone. What's up, How you Mike? doing, Mike? <laughs> Let's have it. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. No. So, so here's what the it, thing. So, all. <laughs> so, so part of this is what what we were all saying all along was nobody, nobody on either. Well, nobody on some sides of this are upset. We're just saying. Hey, here are all the reasons we're going down the list. We're making that checklist and we're checking them down at, as we go. And the reason why this all came back up again, if you hadn't watched the last, last episode was there was that $3,700 eBay sale that Jason just mentioned. Right. And right. so we all started thinking about it again mm -hmm. and we just decided to do some of that CSI work that, that if you watched the last episode, you saw. So as we talked about, we've got this mental checklist, having the experience that we all have, including Mike in, in the vinyl collecting game and the collecting game in general. And you keep going down this list and you make the check mark of what does it smell like? What does it feel like? Does it just have the right feel in the hand? Does it have the right weight? Does it, you know, does it have that sort of ghosted kind of uh, vinyl mark on the inside where the vinyl had been against it? Probably like all these things just keep adding up and adding up. And so we did a little bit more work and uh, Jason and I talked about it today a little bit. And then uh, Mike went ahead and like Jason said, and did a little bit of his own work. So okay. I guess let him sort of take it from there. Well, Jason is gonna go ahead. yeah, be before we jump into the really, really good part of this, what Mike did, uh, Joe, yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit because there were a few other things that we discovered afterwards as well. Yeah. Um, that I do want to talk about because I think they legitimately need to be discussed. So one thing that we were unsure of and we spoke about 
uh, on the last episode was that uh, we've never been able to de definitively figure out what the font was for the uh, you know the special edition for radio right. set. Yeah, the font right, right there that that John is showing us. Right. Um, never been able to figure that out. And of course, we always said if if that if we could figure out what that font is, and if the damn thing came out in '92, question you know it's over with. It, it, it's counterfeit you know that's yeah. definitive and uh, but if that font existed predated that or even predated the 70s uh, if it was a vintage font then we could speak to the fact that well that's that's another you know feather in the cap that this <clears throat> thing could have been printed in the 70s so um and quite frankly, that was one of the things for me where I was like, right. gosh, it just doesn't, it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. It felt kind of more modern and it almost felt like something that had been done on KISS stuff throughout right. the years. Like it almost just had that kind of feel. So that was one thing that raised an alarm bell for me of, of it being on the side of this thing isn't real. Right. right. So, so there is the font if you, right. if you see it. And, uh, and then Joe had a friend check into it and discovered that this font is called what, what I didn't write it. It's uh, it's called, it's called Euro style. Yeah. Euro but style. it's Euro style. What was it? Italic. It was a like medium, Ital Ital a, a light condensed Italic, I think is what it is. Hold on. Let me exactly what we, what we said it was. It was euro style black italic is what it was Sorry, called. black yes yeah and as you can see up here on on the screen that this font was designed in 1962 and uh so that kind of does away with the this is a modern font yeah. kind of thing it's definitely a vintage font now i know mike jason uh, can he, you sorry can you throw see, up that graphic at, again real quick see i thought it was the uh micro gamma like the solo albums had right and when I made my mock-up of John's cover, I just used this uh, micro gamma and then I squeezed it in a little and bit. And it and it's and it's close. It's I close. was it's I close. was actually going to say that it's kind of close. Here I'm throwing it back up, Joe. But uh, but if you look at it, if you really analyze it, it's not the same. All the letters yeah. are not the same. Now, what were you going to say, Joe? So what's interesting, Mike Stone, is there is a there's a paragraph. So I'll get to what's on the screen in just a second. But it, let me read this real quick. Your style is a geometric sans serif typeface designed in 1962 by Italian type designer Aldo Novaris. The design was based off Microgramma, an earlier typeface from Novaris that was available in uppercase only. So you right. were kind of in the in the neighborhood. So. Um, so this, what you're actually seeing on the screen right now, that was actually typeset by a friend of mine um, when I sent him that bit and said, hey, do you know what font this is? And then I actually did a little bit more digging. I found it and I asked him, is it this one or is it this one? And he looked into it and he goes, oh, it's this. He set this so you can see how it's, that's, that's it. Yeah, right. that's so, it. So that, awesome. that, this was set in the last, you know, 48 hours. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah, this, really interesting. not the color rock and roll over. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn it, we blew it. So so there's that. And then, you know, uh, Mike and John and I have been talking, you know, in the background for, you know, the last 24 hours or so. And Mike has found that it, John found a lot of in, interesting information about, you know, mm -hmm. the the printing plants and stuff. And then Mike right. dug <laughs> even deeper I yeah. believe into this modern album finishing company. Is that the, is that the one? Uh, I dug into them a little bit deeper and then I started going into the uh, printing plants that we know of from the eighties uh, reissues. Okay. You know, the, the, so, the 501, 206, 07, 04, those printing plant. Numbers. That's right. That's right. right. I, so, I dug so, into them too. So John, did you want to kind of touch on what we were talking about? Yeah, I was trying to pull it up. What was the name again, Mike? Because it, it was the printing plan, and then the guy's name is the actual inventor or the designer of the patent for both uh, those, the Unipack, Unipack and just the regular style fold-over one-piece jacket that pretty much all say, modern LP jackets are made from. Yeah, we have I'm to say the, last, the guy's last name was Shore. Uh, yes, yeah, Shore. Right, Paul, Paul Shore. Shore. I remember because I was yeah, thinking Paul Shore. Paul, Paul Shore in my head. Yeah. But, yeah. Right, and it was Shorewood Printing, wasn't it? Uh, uh, he worked for a place called Wirehauser too, which uh, 
if I remember right, they they were the plant that had the 206 on the back of the jackets. And then, yeah, there's Shorewood, which you would think he worked for, but I, right. I didn't see anything that really connected him to it. That plant there is the the 501 printing plant number on the back of your jackets. Got it. Right. I'll go back. I thought Shorewood was actually him. I thought I saw that. I have to get my old man readers. Bear with me here. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging back into our text now. Founded in 66. Da, 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 da. Yes. Owner Paul Shore invented the Shore Pack. So 60s owner. So he also patented those two style of LP jackets, the uni pack. And right. he's also the founder of Show Shorewood Printing. Oh, okay. So that was so. interesting. So his name was on that same patent number that we mm. that I found in my R LP right. jacket. Right. So uh the the one thing that I, I also wanted to bring this up because I I want to be completely transparent here too. Uh and if I'm recalling correctly, because there was a lot of, of uh text in our chats. This uh, what was this company? The one out of Canada, and then there was a a, a New York office as well. That was right, modern. that modern modern, modern yeah. album finishing. Yeah. Which is is that where we thought the 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 colored one came from? Well, the number three, I thought it was affiliated with that plant. Okay, uh, I I wasn't one hundred percent sure, but that's where I you know the three. Uh, so my, because my... Joe opened his, it was four and five. Right. So I figured right. the three was based on a, the printing plant. So, you know, Mike did find some pretty interesting damning information uh, talking about at least the Canadian arm of this, where it says um, in late 1981, this printing plant was raided by the police for counterfeiting along with precision records and Paramount pressing and Hoover, I guess the guy who ran it or owned it, uh, was criminally charged for counterfeiting. So, you know, that's a little damning. Right. Was this made in 1981? Was it a counterfeit? Right. I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, I don't think we're going to find anything that tells us, in my opinion, that it's definitively 76 that this was printed. But I think what we're going to show here in a minute uh, with what Mike did with the black and white promo, it's, it's going to it's gonna push some people over to the off of the fence to the, the real side a little bit. So, Mike, you want to talk about what you did? Sure. <laughs> so, uh, And I have yeah. your photos here, so I can throw them up, too. Right. So some people were saying we should take one of these apart. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't want to do it because, I mean, yeah, the jacket is... A little bit smooth but you could definitely tell the materials just a little bit different and i was was pretty worried about taking a blade to it right and uh you know i did uh i don't know four five six other jackets today <laughs> he got some practice in <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i learned what to do what not to do and yeah. uh no exacto so, knife well, I'll on. tell you what not to do. Don't take apart a $3,700 record. <laughs> Thanks. I already sacrificed mine. Yeah. So basically, uh, what went into the pan here was this jacket, a hairdryer, ah. and an exacto knife. Okay, yeah. so yeah. what were you going along, heating it so, up? So yeah, I would, uh, I would hold the hairdryer up here. Of course, I've got everything in my right hand right now. I would start off at the opening, and I would heat that up for a couple of seconds. Yeah. And then I would take my knife. <laughs> Didn't need to turn the damn thing on. <laughs> but I would take my knife, and I would get underneath that flap. And then once I got started going this way, I would just hold the hairdryer right here. Right. And I mean, that blade, I didn't have to put any pressure. It was, right. it was a hot knife through butter. And I went all the way down on both sides. And I mean, I got a clean, clean cut. Yeah. Here's yeah. the pic picture of it he sent. I mean, that's a pretty yeah. clean. That's what, sorry, John, that's way cleaner than your come apart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can see that the jacket style is, uh, 
similar. It's very similar. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is the you know the rock and roll over one, the color rock and roll over one. So it's, it's pretty bang on. You know, designed pretty much the same way, kind of looking like there. So, um, and then so we get to the inside of it, right? We get to the inside. I look at the flap on the bottom side. Yeah, the bottom side. And you can see there is absolutely nothing there. Right. Get to the top side. Nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, no. And let me flip that over for I've, you. I've got the picture of it. You don't yeah. know. So what, what Mike is showing you is there yeah. is the exact same, same. pattern number and let me th- let me just throw it up here. Yeah, my type the typefaces are the same for both. Type there's the one on the color rock and roll over. And here is the one on the black and white rock and roll over. Type Yeah, but when was that font created? <laughs> I don't know. We're not getting into that. <laughs> I don't know. When was the first typewriter? <laughs> right. And so, when was the first typewriter? <laughs> so uh that's a pretty as we were saying right just prior to hitting record that's a pretty definitive that's something, <laughs> that's something yeah um yeah. but you know it, what it tells me it, it tells me that the black and white is clearly a fake that's right sure <laughs> yeah it is it is definitely not what i wanted to find when i opened this up let's put it that way right, that's right. But why would you say again i guess i get i guess i have to stop you there why would you say want or not want what, well, what we don't even it's not like you were caught counterfeiting these things although well, i do have to I say know. you were pretty you were pretty nimble I, with that razor blade and the hair dryer you got that right open no problem like a counterfeiter would. i could have taken some <laughs> lessons i could have used it <laughs> but uh yeah, well, I mean, wh- I mean I, just all the shit talking that I've done over the years about yeah. copies like John's, you know. I, yeah, I, I did. Tell us more about that, Mike. <laughs> oh, God, all you got to do is just go back and read every one of your episodes where he brings that thing up. <laughs> you know what's weird is oh, it, it really just, it started kidding. when we used Give to do time. shows way back. You know, I, I got this in the early 2000s. I want to say 2006. Mm maybe a little later. And I didn't know that it was definitely um, a counterfeit. I had seen it in like, a, you know, we talked earlier in the nineties, I was on my radar to find, I found it for a good price. I got it. Uh, I didn't learn about it being counterfeit until I joined this group. So when we started doing the shows, the camera would turn off and I would go, you know, have you guys ever seen one of these? I would just, it bothered me because to feel it, to hold it, I mean, I have the fake Vinny creatures. I mean, it's like sure. a no-brainer. It's so thin. It was blurry. It always, I mean, it's just so fake. You couldn't even <clears> defend <throat> it if you wanted to. But this one always bothered me because I'm like, look, I've had a lot of rock and roll overs in my life. And this one is probably, if it's counterfeit, again, I keep saying it's the best damn counterfeit I've ever had in my life as far right. as the quality of printing, construction. It's just like a 76. And that's why I always say, for those who don't believe, you've got to hold this in your hand in right. person. I just don't, it yeah. just doesn't come across here, you know? Right. Well, and, yeah. Yeah, or, or you, you take the, you know, the word from somebody who's been collecting vinyl for what, at least 30 years or more, John, right? Right. Um, and, and you have the experience of what does it feel like in the hand? What does it smell like? What is the substrate? You know, it's 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 that kind of stuff, you know. Right. And there, there's times where we get things in at the record store that people have put it put aside. That's almost like a time capsule. Right. And yeah. they'll bring it in and, and you go, this feels fake to me because it's like it still has that graininess on the cover from when they were originally printed. But right. it, all that means is that somebody had put it on a shelf and hadn't touched it for the intervening 50 years or whatever. It's 45 years, you know? So Right, right. right. You know, a perfect yeah. example, of course, this is a completely different artist. But, I mean, this is a 1961 still sealed. You know what I mean? It's amazing, those museum pieces. They're still out there, you know? Yeah. Sure, I mean, you they, know, they, yeah, and they, untouched, and just like he took it out of the store. And what's amazing to me, this is thing is freaking, you know, 20, 10, 15 years older than me. As crazy as I've told the story many times for the past, you know, eight, 
I th- hell, I think it's been almost eight years we've been doing this show on and off. Um, most of the 70s promos I got from a gentleman who owned a distrib- or co-owned a distribution company and got promos of everything brought to, hand, brought to him by the label rep, handed to him, and he put those things in sleeves and put them on the shelves. He hated Kiss. He right. never, never played them. Never, and they played right. a Kiss record. They sat on his shelf for 40 years until I saw them and asked him if he, if he would sell them. And he said, sure, I don't, I don't like Kiss. I've never right. played those. Right. And I get, you know, 12 promo LPs that literally, you know, came off the printing press, went to the label reps' hands, onto this guy's shelf and hadn't moved in 40 years. Right. And when they're sitting on my shelf right now, still have never been played, have only been pulled out a couple of times to show on this show. And they're fucking dead mint. Right. You know, dead right. mint. Right. So yeah, they're couple, out there. A couple of years ago, I came across something I wasn't sure of. Now, you know, I talk a lot of shit. Yes. We know. <laughs> this, this was, <laughs> This was all in jest, you know, just having mm-hmm. fun. I am quite open minded, actually. <laughs> but uh, anyway, except I, for this, well, I mean, <laughs> just giving you a hard time. Go ahead. Uh, over and over one side of the fence and the other. But sure. uh, anyway, I come across this and it made no sense to me at all. I bought it. I mean, I paid out the ass because it was an auction and somebody else that wanted it saw it and i had it in my mind you know i'm going to get this thing in i'm going to go over it with a fine tooth comb if i find it to be fake i'm breaking this son of a bitch (laughs) and uh and you know i got it in i sat with it for two weeks and uh i just happened to see another copy pop up on ebay and I bought it real quick and got it in and everything matched up. And that copy sits with a friend of mine now. But what I'm talking about is a promotional copy. Of oh, Rock yeah. And Roll Over oh, yeah. Yeah. On a, on a Filmworks oh, label. Oh, right. Hold that back up. Hold that back up, Mike. Sure. To the screen. Yeah. Yeah. That's one I believe. Joe, haven't you talked about that? That's one you need, right, Joe? Yeah, that's what I need too. It, it is. Yeah. It, it's fake though. <laughs> it's it. <laughs> Brain not, my guy. I compared this to the Campbell label and it, it's it's real. The only thing I, is I disagree. That, that jacket has <laughs> no markings whatsoever. No cut corners, no holes, no stamp. I mean, no saw mark. I See, mean, that, it, it, that's funny. There's, you know, also been this term flying around in in all, uh, many collector circles is, you know, Frankensteining. That mm-hmm. that to me, you know, when people go, oh, that's Frankenstein because that doesn't have a cut corner, or it doesn't have a gold stamp, or it doesn't have a BB hole, or it doesn't have the notch cut corner. That doesn't mean anything, man. No. If if you know anything about printing or or making anything. There, you're going to order a thousand of something, and you're either going to get 920 or you're going to get 1120. And nobody's going to go, Oh, you know what? Throw out all those jackets because they don't exactly match. Right. I, Blue Note, Blue Note Records, the jazz label is littered with this stuff. The transitional right. copies that happens with this stuff, yep. it's, yeah. it's because they're never, nobody's ever throwing out that resource. So, what you're actually saying when you're talking about a Frankenstein is that somebody had multiple copies of a record, which most people never do. And they then had to take this from this and that from that and switch it all up. And now we have a Frankenstein. So that's, in my opinion, my estimation anyway, that's a lot less, that's a lot less um, apt to happen than it is for a record label to go, man, just keep throwing those promo label discs into that jacket. And when we transition over, then we transition over and we just keep it rolling. Nobody's right. thinking like a collector. Yeah, a real, a real world right. example of that before you before you go on, Mike, is, uh, you know, Joe and I have our little record label and we're doing these slaughter records out there. And, mm-hmm. you know, we printed 2000, we ordered 2000 covers to be printed up and I have 300 extra jackets sitting out there and I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do with them. And one of my options is to put test pressings in them. Well, there you go. 
So right. that's a real world example of what right. Joe's and talking then somebody about. thirty years from now will go. Well, test pressings didn't come didn't with come in the actual com jackets. commercial covers. They were always in generic covers. Well, that's just you can't say that. I'm, I'm about to do that. I have right. I have sixty test pressings here, or twenty of each record, and I'm about to put them in real jackets but, out there. But right. they didn't originally come in those jackets. Oh, Doesn't Mike Stone, stop, stop it. It's our matter. company. We say what goes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know what? You, you you showed me a perfect way to open all of these uh, jackets, and I'm going to open them up with the hair dryer and the razor blade, and I'm going to write inside of each of those, fuck Jason Herndon, right on the inside, <laughs> and put them all back together. And somebody on a show 30 years later is going to go, Oh my God, they're the same. They right. are real. Right. Or, right. Hell, you ain't even got to open the jackets, man. That's too much work. Just get you a yeah. little scroll and put it on the dead wax of the record. You can do that too. Hey, yeah. I've yeah. got the fuck Jason Herndon variant. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Because you remember seeing that video where that dumbass cut open that $4,000 record? <laughs> Done. It was not $4,000. Come on. $3,700. It was $3,700. With tax, with tax though. I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. On, e on eBay, you got to pay sales tax. So I tax, bet you tax and shipping. That's a four thousand dollar record. Yeah, 4, taxes hey, suck. Hey. Ten percent sucks. Yeah, but uh, I was leaning towards a Frankenstein on this. Uh huh. And then I've got that second copy in for a buddy of mine. His yeah. jacket was not marked up either. Right. And then I've come across a few more people that so, found so, one. So clearly. Uh, yeah just, just let's let's just uh you know what's the word i'm, I'm forgetting it Let, let's just uh circle, well, make, back, make, circle back to the original uh no i was gonna say let, uh, you know make believe story here what's that called what, conjecture hypothetical. this is just I, hypothetical a, yeah this is hypothetical, hypothetical conjecture so the label says hey we need to send out s some more promos of rock and roll over in 1977 because kiss is you know exploding even more We've got a whole shit ton of jackets sitting over here. Well, let's just run a few promo label records because we have the plates, slide them in those stock jackets, send them out to the record label. Saving money. I have a, a theory on why this thing exists. Okay. So in the holiday 76 issue of Cream Magazine, it's, it's the one... It, it, it's a little ad in the magazine. It's a, a subscription drive. You know, uh -huh. you sign on for a year subscription, you get a free copy of Rock and Roll Over. Yeah. This this was what November December of seventy six. The magazine was, and they ran that sweepstakes, I believe, until February. Which uh, after this is done, I've got a picture of it on my desktop somewhere. Okay. Uh, they ran it until February of 77. So, I mean, you figure they take three, four months to gather up all these names. They probably send it off to the record company, say, hey, we need this many copies of Rock and Roll Over, right? Sure. And maybe the company just sent it straight into... Uh, where this one pressed at uh this was pressed in Pittman, new jersey right so they just send that info right into to jersey they knock out however many they needed yep on a quick run and that is back and disperse them that that's my theory on that's why a this. prime example of how that kind of shit happens and makes people for 50 years later go why the fuck does this exist? Well, yeah. there was a reason for it to exist. Now, my buddy Pat Lucero disagrees with with all of the theory that we had about uh, these color rock and roll over jackets being printed first and then being pulled and then going to okay. black and white. He okay. thinks that uh, love you, Pat. He thinks his theory is that. Uh, they already had a template for a nice, you know, black and white promo because they had done it with Destroyer and mm -hmm. they right. they printed the black and white rock and roll over. And then <clears throat> somewhere down the line, still it, it still had records and still needed to throw to send out some more promos and hastily threw together the color cover 
and printed some more jackets and, and stuck, uh, you know, and that maybe that's why we see less of them because there were just fewer of them. I don't know. Who knows yeah. what the truth is? Yeah. It's all conjecture. Theory. That's another all conjecture. Theory. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the point is there are reasons why these things happened. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, they're they're the same font and everything. Yeah, on the back. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what yeah. that's Pat. That's Pat's whole thinking was that they they already you know the design team already had it designed. Let's do the same thing. It's quick and easy, dirty, right. black and white. It comes out quickly. Right. But for some reason, towards the you know at the end of that, when they ran out, maybe they still had some vinyl, and they for whatever reason was at a different press printing plant for whatever reason. They yeah. printed up these color jackets, and there's just less of them. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. E either theory sounds good to me. Um, and again, just it's all conjecture. We're just hypothetical here. We don't. We'll. We'll probably never know. I know. I know. You know. Do Do we know if this came before the album or not? That's a good question, and I don't know that. Any ideas, Joe? I mean, I, I would imagine this is probably to hype the tour. Uh, do we know when about when the rock and roll over tour started? Well, now we know that exactly, right? That'll be we can find it in a book, right? Um, the tour will be online too. What's What's interesting about this, Mike? It, look at this track listing. Look what it doesn't include. The it very doesn't, very doesn't important song. The, it doesn't include the damn uh, the the first single. That's right. Yeah. Calling, Dr. Calling Dr. Hit. Love. Calling Dr. Love. So oh, I've never noticed that. I don't I don't know why this would have been sent out after the record came out when they had a huge hit single and not include the huge hit single on this. So well, I wonder if they were thinking they already had the single out though, so maybe they're pushing these songs and don't need to push Dr. Love. See? Maybe Hard Luck Woman was the focus on this. Could it could have been. That's that's good. So, I mean, but my thinking and it's again just th theory. My thinking is this is the songs they wanted the the radio stations to yeah. to uh, concentrate on and for some reason calling Dr. Love was picked later. So, I was th I would think this came first, but I don't know. But, um but, Julian but, Gill, if you watch this, it, do you have any paperwork on this that shows when go. this came out? The tour started November 24th, 1976. So, it was right after the album release. Because yeah. it was November 11th or some shit like that. Uh, Kurt Gooch will, will correct me. Yeah, of but, course. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the the reason why I was asking, you know, I just had a thought in my head. Okay. You know, okay, say <gasps> say <gasps> they did. Wait, mine has a date on it. Interesting. 12 of 76. 12 of 76 from, from the radio station. So pretty damn close. Yeah. Pretty damn close. But my my thinking was if the color version was first, mm -hmm. and then they got so far into the printing and said, "Hey, this the back of this jacket says nothing about the assistant engineer. We need to pull this." And you know, there's the corky mistake right there. And then they just did this real quick on the cheap. And this does have corky on it. Oh, it does. It does. Okay. Yeah, it sure does. So it'd be at probably unless they just didn't, they just forgot on the on the. Yeah, I mean that that could just album. be an art department mistake. Where yeah, they that could, forgot. Right. That could and, be. And yeah. most most likely, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, that that's just kind of where where my brain was going on that. Gotcha. Again, we'll probably never know. Probably no. have, never have any idea. Um, no. I'm pretty sure that Dennis Wallach was asked on a, po on, a on another podcast about this color rock and roll over yeah. uh, promo, and he has no recollection of it. I, I heard that, yeah. But it's 50 years ago. I and, know. I and, he, and he's gotten some stuff wrong in the past. That's right. Yeah. So it, God it just him. happens. I love I, him. Yeah. 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 And and I did, I did send Dennis a PM asking mm -hmm. if he knew anything about the color version. He never got back to me. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, but he was asked on that podcast and I'm so glad that dude asked him, I forget his name, forgive me. But, uh, um, but again, it, I mean, it, it might've been done without his input. It might've been something haste hastily done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who knows? Right. We'll pro probably never know. I'm sure all the people that were involved in the printing of that are dead or nearly dead. You know, those people were probably or mostly dead. 
or mostly it's, dead? Man, I'm getting old. Not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see Dennis's name anywhere on this. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. So this right. this was obviously done without his input. Could have been, yeah. Right. So anyway. Or, or they just didn't list the... Or, or, or they just didn't put his name on it. Or they didn't yeah. put his name on yeah. it. Because, right. yeah, I, I don't see nothing about the design or anything on here. So the, the big kicker to circle back is we got a patent number and a printing plant number here on the on the color rock and roll over jacket yeah that where the design is almost spot on the same as the black and white jacket that has the exact same patent number uh where we've tracked that patent number down uh to be in a jacket design from the 60s right <clears throat> right right 62 <clears throat> something like that yeah applied for 65 and that's right and, and finalized in 67 right yeah so uh so the timing seems right. Now, yeah. again, like we said off off camera, this doesn't definitively prove anything, and we're not trying to stick anything in the eyes of anybody. That's why Mike is on here because you know Mike was was on the other side. And oh god, I'm I'm, I'm probably the most vocal dissenter <laughs> about this thing. <laughs> no, you're. I'm gonna put you at number two. And uh, <laughs> but uh, All right. but yeah, but this is just fair. you know like Joe said. You know, this is just another box to tick off. Of, yeah, uh, on, I, I on think this it just—it's definitely a question mark, right? I mean, at yeah. least, at least. Well, I mean, so where do you stand now, Mike? Are you still on the fence? Or are you more a little bit more to the right? I know you're never going to be a hundred percent, and I don't think I'll ever be a hundred percent unless I find out somebody who had a photo I, of I, it in '77 or something. I'm still on the fence, and that could just be. I'm a, bull, I'm a bullheaded bastard. I mean, my <laughs> wife tells me that every day about something. But, so she, but let, she's a lucky woman. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> let's, Look, let's, and that reminds me of a story. I have to say something real quick. Right. I don't know if all you guys are Van Halen fans, right? Oh, but are yeah. you familiar oh, yeah. with Hate the em. red vinyl EP that came out before the first album? Right? Yeah. 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 You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Okay. There was a huge warehouse find of those in the 90s. And a friend of mine was telling me that story, the story today, and I hadn't heard it, and I won't divulge his name. I don't know if he wants me to say it or not. But anyway, sure. a batch of those were found in the 90s, those EPs sealed. And mm -hmm. I guess a lot of people freaked out and went, those never came sealed. Those are counterfeits. Those are fakes. He sent me the photo. There's a photo of Eddie and David, maybe you already know the story, in the back of a limo rolling a joint on a sealed and I'll have to send the photo, black and white photo of it on a sealed copy of that EP in the back of a limo. And it sh that's how it kind of shut everybody up was this yeah. photo that was randomly discovered. That's right. These guys rolling a joint on a sealed copy of that red vinyl EP in the back of a limo. Yeah. I, could put, uh, I could put plastic on that vinyl and that photo in Photoshop in two minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it Eddie See, Van you can Halen. never win. You can never that, that's, win. Man. That's the, that's exactly it. It's like for some people, you there just can't be enough evidence. Right, right, right. Everybody, the sky's blue. I promise. Most the other thing days, is, I hope Gene. Blue. I hope Gene throws one up, signed to auction. I oh, hope he defaces God. the shit out of it with his signature <laughs> and sells it for four grand, Joe. That's that's and, a whole other I, conversation for a whole other day. I've been reamed and, out for complaining about. But that. I'm serious. I hope he throws one <laughs> up. Me too. <laughs> uh now question john is your patent number on the top of side of the jacket or the bottom it's on the bottom okay see mine mine's on the top side right. when i hope when i hold the jacket up the right way and open it up that patent number is actually upside down gotcha okay yeah and then mine's like that I don't think that really says anything they probably obviously it weren't printed at the same time you know, so, I wondered, Joe might know, I mean, how do these lay out? Would these be two on a giant sheet that would cut out? I mean, would it be possible the patent numbers would be on opposite sides per two sheet? I mean, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I mean, the, probably somebody said to somebody in the, in the key lining department where they have all these layers of plastic film, right? They probably said, hey, you have to put, you have to put the, a patent number on the inside flap. And one person probably here put it there, and one person, and they probably went, Do you care where it goes? And they're like, No, it's going to be hidden and glued over anyway. 
we just need to have the patent number to hold our patent or something is probably right. what the thought was. Right. right. And so, yeah, no, they, they if it's not going to show, it wouldn't matter. And, and yeah, then, Mike, that, yours yours doesn't have the three, right? It's just the patent. No, number. it's just the patent. Number. Yeah, his didn't have a printing there's, plant number in it at all. Yeah, yeah. There's there's nothing hidden by the glue, and I mean, yeah. yeah and see, Mike Joe's who took apart a regular couple of regular rock and roll overs only had printing plant numbers in them and didn't have patent numbers inside of them. Right. So Correct. It's, yeah. So it's interesting the the differences we have here but well, still, and there's also you guys too there would be different art boards probably for different plants that went all you know it, it just it just depends how the process went right, right there's right, an art right. department making these boards probably sending them all over the place to, because they were printing these in much different quantities back then and we know that there were multiple printing pl plants right yeah. so they're probably sending these boards all over the place and these boards just because like today, when I make a PDF of art, it goes out to everybody and it's going to be exactly the same. Right. Unless right. the printing, you know. But what was happening back then, people were actually physically having to put these things together, cut them out with exactos, glue them down, register them up, put all the, the film all together, package them up and send them out. So you could see how there could be that, you know, that human error, that discrepancy there, you know. Right. Sure. Sure. Right. right. And, and I think, too, like I've, I've, I've never been up close to printer proofs where I've actually paid attention. Uh, but I have seen a ton of printer's proofs online, like old printer's proofs. Sure, sure. And you can always tell one of those edges, it's not a straight cut, you know. It, it's a wonky cut. like right. well, because, you did, just... because what happened was you had stat paper back in the day, and if it was just black and white, you were trying to glue it down onto a board so that when you sent that board out, you would, you would actually put the crop marks in there. You would glue the stat down. And so you didn't give a shit outside of the crop marks unless you were super precise about your work and wanted it to be perfect, even for something that wasn't going to print outside the crop marks. I would just take the razor blade and just go and just get, cause you were wanting to move, you know, with some efficiency. So, Got it. Yeah. so it, it, it was just one on a, on a sheet then. Cause that's, that's where I was going with it was maybe they cut it to make two sheets because they had oh, well, two printed on no, it. No, you would probably, I don't know how many you could get, uh, they call it up on a sheet. So like you've seen the uncut trading card sheets, I'm sure, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. you, you know how many come front and, you know, on the front. So you see, um, well, maybe even hundreds or a hundred or something cards up on one giant sheet. So you might get like four. I have a friend in the printing industry now can ask him like what, what a, what a typical printing press size is, because when you get beyond a certain size, then it becomes a way more expensive proposition. So it's sort of like when you're deciding what size something is like a book, they'll go, Oh, if you make this 10 by 10 or 12 by 12, you have a lot less waste that you're cutting off. So you're having to throw out or throw away a lot less paper. So that's why, because everything's sort of geared in the U.S. to eight and a half by eleven, eleven by seventeen. Like all the paper is sort of made to those dimensions to be able to most efficiently put all those those sizes up. If that, if any right. of that made any sense? Of course, yeah, it does. yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I think we've seen some examples of uh, even the the 2014 Kiss releases where there's two different jackets on yeah. on on one. Two right. Different that's why I things. asked about sure. the possibility. Yeah. Of course, but, uh, you know, one's black and white, one's color. They wouldn't been been on the same sheet. No, these. No, 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 no. But I was just thinking, would there have been two to it, and so the patent would have been, you know, one would right. have been opposite to the other or something. I mean, I don't yeah. know. Probably more likely that it had to do with the board that it was originally gotcha. key lined onto. Yeah, and how they. Gotcha. And they probably didn't care. Got gotcha. It. Yeah. All right. Anything, well, Mike? Let me just say thank you for being yes. willing to bust open your black and white. Thank you sure. very much. Sure. I appreciate you, it. I, you you say you're stubborn and bullheaded, but you were stubborn and bullheaded enough to go ahead and open this thing up to allow us to all because you were leaving yourself up to the possibility of oh shit the patents in there. You know, that was. was what was in my mind is there was nothing, there was going to be nothing inside this thing, and I was going to be able to just open this up and say, ha ha, fucker. Yeah. <laughs> and now, now you open it up and we go, ha ha, uh -huh, fucker. fucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it. No, 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 no. Not, no intention of beating up or. Oh, sure, sure. No, no. I, I, don't want it, I don't want it to come across like that. We just wanted to. 
you know, we, we just wanted to everybody to be open minded about it. But, you know, yeah, every, exactly. everything yeah. is not definitive as proven in an, an old Kiss My Wax episode where I got from a record store a sealed double platinum promo. And yeah, I was yeah. I was told absolutely no way that was originally sealed, but it was cut. The seal was exact. It was old. You could tell it was a vintage seal. Wasn't, wasn't it stamped through the track list? Sticker? And it was stamped through the track list sticker. Yeah. And I opened it up, and there were promo labels on the inside. And, and yeah, Bank you're not the hell. you're not the only one that's got it. Bank, I, right. I, I was on a YouTube Bank, rabbit Bank, hole, Bank, and somebody Bank, else. Had it. Right. Bank, Bank. It's a shame when that happens, right? Yeah. Bank. So, so I mean, that just goes to show that for some reason, and I was heavily 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 in the no promos were sealed because i worked in a record store for 10 years and almost mm -hmm. no promos we got were sealed it was in right. the cd era but almost none of them were sealed because <laughs> they didn't want to spend the extra money almost. to seal those things huh i got I almost got a almost that's that's the word right that's, word. It, yeah, that's what i tried to say in the last episode and somebody called me out for it on facebook today saying how philosophical i was but that there's a lot of grayscale. All of life is grayscale. Yeah. It all is. There are hardly any black and white issues, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, realities out there. So, right. I mean, the, the thing is, like, why invest yourself one way or the other? I don't have one of these. I'll be honest. I've never touched one, never Nor seen one. I. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I have absolutely no skin in the game. But yeah. I, as a, as an, a, hopefully a reasonable person, can look at this thing and go, wow, this... This thing meets a lot of the criteria for me. If I were to look at it, I'm I'm assuming I would go, yeah, this thing is, this thing is real, you know. Right. And I have to, and I have to leave it up to other experts who I trust, John Humphrey, JC, other people who have this thing who go, oh yeah, man, this feels like all the other records. I have. After, after the know, episode right. went up, went up, and people started watching it, I had lots of people, and I'm not going to say their names because I don't know if they want me to mention them, but prominent vinyl collectors who had been to Arian's house and held that thing in their hand and mm -hmm. said, I was a skeptic at first, but when I, when I held it, I was convinced that it was real. Yeah. Back, back to the sealed promo thing. Mm -hmm. Last year uh, in St. Louis, there's a radio station, KC 95. They are a big deal in the Midwest. Okay. Well, we're, we're back in the day, you know, gotcha. in the seventies. KC. Uh, there is a DJ there who's been there. God, I think he said he started in 76. He's still there. His name is uh, John Hewlett. They call him the U-Man. I reached out to him on Instagram. I was like, hey, bud. I said, uh, there is a huge debate on promotional copies. And, I mean, you were, you were in it, bud, back in these days did these promos come to you sealed or unsealed? And he told me that most came unsealed, but not all. That's right. Yeah. yeah. There's your gray. There's, so, Joe's yeah. gray. There, there, there's your gray. Yeah, that's right. So that's what, you know, and, and to speak, to go circle back to what Joe, what we started talking about is, you know, there's no reason to take uh, for any of us to take a hard line on these things to, to the point to where we're fighting with each other. Sure. Because there can always be an exception to whatever rule we're trying to argue. Oh, sure, right. sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I come across kind of brash sometimes. You you can't read, you can't read my smart ass uh, <laughs> dialect when when you're right when you're reading my post. And uh, I think it was on the Instagram post that I made. You know, ha ha, that's a lot of money for counterfeits. Right. But, uh, a friend of mine, you know, he he came in and, and said something and I fired back and, and I was having fun. Mm -hmm. And he's like, dude, I I love you, man. I I, I don't want to fight with you. And I had to get into the messenger. I'm like, dude, I'm I'm taking the piss here, man. <laughs> yeah, it's hard sometimes to <laughs> yeah. know the tone, right? You but, know, right. And when we're messaging and talking back and forth. That's right. But the other side of that is sometimes Sometimes it's it's legitimately serious. Sure, sure. Oh and, yeah, uh, and uh, and and some of us have been on the other side of that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. so you know, just we just look. We're all in this to collect records, and it, you know, we don't all we can't all be right about everything. The, the idea is to get the most 
the the best answers you know together and figure That's all right. this thing out together because right. we all have different attributes we've all been in different parts of the industry different parts of collecting you know we have a musician we have a, a printing and design guy a music industry sales guy you know and, and a collector a less than professional musician <laughs> but we can you know <laughs> we can only help each other by having these conversations that's it and i love this group that's why i do these shows i've learned yep. a lot from this group you know things i wouldn't have known without it and i appreciate everybody but yeah i think sometimes we get a little too serious about it and yeah. we need to kind of come at it with a, a more open mind at times that's right. right so joe right. joe lighten the fuck up okay <laughs> no thanks <laughs> And I don't like the groups. Just to I make it clear, just, I, just I'm it. fully aware. <laughs> I'm fully aware. I think I seen you post for the first time today. Just because somebody said something in, to in him. one of the right. comments <laughs> sections. I'm yeah, like, oh, the gray area. I was like, hell, he's on gray. Facebook. Yeah, it, it's funny because I had I had it, somebody asking me, Joe. Uh, I, I'll just say his name. Charles Brock was like. It, after the episode came out, we, we were talking. He's the one that said to me, dude, I know what that font is. Just figured it out. And he sent it to me. And I said, it's so funny you say that because Joe just sent me this. And he was like, I said, great minds. And he said, absolutely. And he said, I, I need to I need to reach out to Joe, you know, and talk to him because uh, Charles Brock is a graphics designer, too. OK. And, uh, okay. He said, I, I'd like to pick his brain, you know, and just talk to him about some few stuff. You know, the things that I saw is done is really great. And I was telling him about your, your Motley Crue stuff that you had done. And he said, uh, I don't think I'm friends with him on Facebook. I, I never see that guy post. And I said, that doesn't mean anything. Joe never posts on Facebook. <laughs> and he looked he, <laughs> he looked doesn't. you up and he said, sure enough. He said, I've been friends with this guy. He never posts. Huh? And I said, he never posts. So, <laughs> you know. No, I stay out of the, I stay out of the fray all the time. Yep. Yeah, probably for the best. Yeah, yeah. I asked I asked Joe to to help moderate the groups collectibles and wax one time. He said absolutely, absolutely <laughs> no I'm not way. Doing it. No way. <laughs> I'm not doing no. it. So. Hell, I I've been in the fray a couple of times and had somebody offer to come to the house and do me and the wife in. So well, I've had that too, man. <laughs> I've had that too. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean that that's a whole separate conversation, a right? Separate conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Mike, again, John tried to. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Yeah, uh, Joe. At some point, I want to talk to you about that rock and roll over picture disc. Uh, nah, it's fake. Well, no, <laughs> I I actually don't believe it's fake. You know, it's probably we're bordering on the official part, but. I oh, I, I, I don't even think it's official. It's, it's just not. somebody who worked at RCA who was coming up with ideas just like we would as artists going, hey, what if we did this or this? And eight of them got printed so that we could test it and somehow it gets out into the market. I don't think it's it's not an official. No, official no, thing. no, it wasn't. It was, it would, yeah, it would but fall in. The, the, it would fall in. It's a, a one of a kind or yeah, a, a prototype. one of eight of a kind or right. something, you know, or a um, few of a kind. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it would be like that creature's picture disc exactly that's on, that's on the that's got the glow in the dark that's eyes. exactly what it would be like yeah okay. it's a prototype prototype yeah. prototype, yeah. prototype. Yeah. exactly it, yeah, and, I, and, and 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 for that reason like i would never put those in our you know rarest records sure, list sure, because sure. those are just people you know it's just industry people going hey what should what should we do next you know that's right right, right. Yeah. they yeah, did yeah, a was... ton of elvis like we talked about and Yes. Yeah, I, w yeah, I was just ones. wondering if it had like the same marks on the inside, like uh, like the uh, regular the RCA matrix. Issue had. It, yeah, it, yeah. I don't think it has a matrix. There's no, yeah, there's no matrix. There's, right. nothing, there's no... nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing on the inside. Right. Uh, but, really? You know, there's a toward the spindle hole. In fact, before we recorded that episode, um, John was talking about the Elvis ones that were done by the same guy. And he said many times the Elvis ones didn't even have Elvis music on it. And we made Joe put it on his turntable to make sure it had Kiss music on it. And it does. Yeah. But it does not have any Matrix stamped or carved in it anywhere. Well, that's weird because usually that, that Matrix stuff is is on the plates. Right. Right. So did they make new just, just plates without putting anything in the Matrix? They certainly yeah. could have done that. But That's again, there could have been also a production reason why the Matrix didn't show up. I mean, like who who knows, right? Who knows? It, it could, yeah. But to best to the best of Joe's eyes, he can't see a Matrix in it. 
this guy, this guy, there's a PDF out there with all, with a lot of the stuff anyway, that this guy created, Mike, I don't know if you stumbled across that. I'm, oh, I'd yeah, be happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the guy's son yeah. actually, um, I think he has his contact info on that PDF. And I think that yeah. P, the PDF is like maybe even eight or nine or more years old. It is, like that, but he so. responded to me. Yeah. yeah. He hit me back. So yeah. Okay. Oh, you did recently here. You did. Oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I got him on the case. He doesn't know if he's got any more, but I have him looking. Oh, great. So And, there's there's a- and by the way, there, this goes back to the whole social media and how everybody should be nicer, nicer to each other on social media all the time and in these groups because we're all better together than we are apart. Somebody came on to the Facebook group and said, hey, I got kicked out of this group because I showed this picture disc before. Yeah, I saw and that. I, and, and, I was, and, it was, and it was called a dinner. Uh, who else has this made at your dinner table version of Rock and Roll Over? Right. So everybody, be nice to each other, yeah? Yeah, man. Yeah, he yeah had, I couldn't there, believe that. Tim Wise has the Rock and Roll Over, the same one you have, Joe, and he has the one that with the Alive 2 Inner Sleep. What I don't know... Um, is so we know the rock and roll over is one disc but this alive two, these two that are made out of the alive two inner sleeve because right. that's one each one each side of the inner sleeve is that one disc is it hands in the crowd shot on right. one or you know is it two I, different disc or is right, it that's what disc? i was that's why i'm trying to and i was so happy he responded to, to find out that exact, you know, if he has any left, but to find out if those are two separate discs or if that's the A and B side of well, one. Well, team, you know? Tim Wise has this one, one with Tim the Lee, hands. Tim Lee, unless it's Tim oh, Wise. Tim, Tim Lee, Tim. Maybe, maybe it yeah, is. Yeah. 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 Sorry, sorry, Tim. So Tim Lee, so he has that. So we need, we can ask him in the group, John. I did. Okay. Is I did same? today. Yeah, you, you saw me post twice in one day on Facebook, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Make notes. Uh, so I said, is the confetti crowd shot the other side of your disc? You know, was it the was it the uh, rock and roll over Kiss logo? Um, and and he hasn't. He, he said he a live two inner sleeve picture disc, um, but he he hasn't said what what's on each side. So I okay. I don't know yet. Yeah. So that could be two different discs for a total of three discs there, or that could just be two. Know, Two or I mean, there, yeah, there's many permutations that it could be, right? It That's could right. be the the logo and the confetti, the logo and the inner sleeve, the inner sleeve and the confetti. Yeah, it can be a lot yeah. of stuff, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. okay, yeah, that's an interesting discussion too. Very cool. So I'm no, sorry not real. I, yeah, our nice each other. Thank you for saying that, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. Mike. Uh, again, I've tried. We tried to do this a few times. Thank you for taking those uh, that jacket apart. And uh, again does it a hundred percent definitively prove it no but does it uh give us another check mark it certainly does and yeah. there's a lot of check marks on this side now so um yeah. so we'll see you know we'll and, see and john just a a regular glue stick that's all you need on this i appreciate it yeah you don't you yeah. don't have to get fancy with uh clear adhesive or nothing like right. that just, right just and i'll I'll clean it up a little bit to put it together so it'll be a nice tight. I appreciate it. I had three or four people not only just comment on the show and have their things to say, but they're really like, yeah. you'll get that back together. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. It, it, it'll, it'll be, be okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Thank you. But yeah. Next time, man, put some heat to it. Yeah. Yeah. Lesson learned. Yeah, for sure. All right. Is that it, guys? Please, so. can that be it? Uh, yes, Joe. You are you are released until you next until next Wednesday. Like and uh, yet, please. Again, I just want to say that 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 this now makes this record, colored rock and roll over, definitively. 